So it begins. Right here is the zero mile mark to our 30 mile journey down the legendary Devil's River, one of Texas's last pretty much hidden bass fishing gems. What you're going to see is Alex and I living out of Easter Kayak for legitimately four days and four nights. Um, I'm a little nervous. Sick. <laughs> that was intense. Giant bass. Ginormous bass. Biggest bass of the trip right here. Oh, yes. Big one. Big one. Big one. Just got finished unpacking and stuff, and then we're gonna pack it again, and then we're gonna unpack it. All kinds of packing and unpacking. Welcome back to the packing tour. So it begins, right here is the zero mile mark to our 30 mile journey down the legendary Devil's River, one of Texas's last pretty much hidden bass fishing gems. It's a place I've wanted to fish for many years now, I've never gotten the chance to do it, but thanks to Bryant and a few of his buddies, Finn and Steven, we've been able to tag along with them and film a, a pretty serious little mini series for you guys. I don't know what to expect. Basically what, what you're going to see is Alex and I living out of these here kayaks for legitimately four days and four nights. The game plan is this, we're gonna launch right here, which is at Baker's Crossing, and make our way down all the way at the pickup point. We've got a pretty decent amount of time to cover as much water as possible, catch as many fish as we possibly can, and film this epic little mini series for you guys. So um, without further ado, let's get in this kayak and do some floating. I'm a little nervous. This is it. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, we are like literally a few miles away from the Texas-Mexico border. So while this is a fun trip, and it's gonna be awesome for you guys to watch us, you know, catch some fish, we do have to be on our, our best behavior and up on our guard because, I mean, it's just, it, it can get a little sketchy right here. But first and foremost, let's focus on fishing and getting down the river because we've got a hefty journey ahead of us, like a hefty journey. You ready, Alex? Let's go. Let's get some of that bread. Wow, the first like 30 yards there's an obstacle. You guys are really in a jam, eh? Oh yeah. Sheesh. What time is it? It's pad tie right now. Not pad time, but pad tie because we got some pads coming up. I didn't know this, but apparently the Devils is full of some grass and our first little spot here, just like 400 miles down, 400 yards down are some pads. So let's do some frogging. No idea. That, see, I always knew the Devil's River was being this big, rocky, clearwater gorge, but this immediately has got my attention. Pads? How can I not fish this? 
I'm gonna start off with a frog. I didn't think the first lure I'd throw here at Devil's River would be a frog, but we're gonna make it work. Well, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. This is just like, it's a lot to take in. I've never fished anything that looks like this before. Oh, I'm on a rock. Oh, I'm turning. Oh, where am I going? Oh, okay. I'm spinning. But seriously, I've never fished a creek or a river that looks anything like what I'm witnessing right now. It's just, it's dense. I guess that's the word for it. It's just dense. There's so much grass underneath the water, above the water, there's pads. The water's clear. It's got kind of a blue tint to it, but it's like still very clear. It's fast moving. It's like definitely a fast moving river. Um, supposedly it's got good smallmouth too, which is contingent with this water flowage. But yeah, navigating this thing's kind of difficult. I can't imagine what it's like when the water's super low. Supposedly the water's pretty high right now. Oh, there we go. There we go. Nice. Oh, man, this looks dirty. Why am I not fishing right now? I'm just like in awe. There we go. Yeah, sir. Whoops, whoops, that could have been bad. Doink! <laughs> this is a pretty important fish. This is my first ever Devil's River largemouth. On the frog too, in the pads. It's so funny, I didn't know homework on this place. I had no idea what to expect. So when I came here and saw pads, I was like super surprised. Nice little Argy. Let's get him back in the water. Wow. <laughs> okay, first victim was on the black frog, probably the most badass bait you can throw in the summertime. The thing is, is we're in Southern Texas, so it's like pretty much summer down here. Whereas North Texas, these fish are, you know, still spawning a little bit of post bondage here and there, but down here it's hot. Like the pads are green and thick, everything is lush. So I'm having to think as if I'm fishing in the summertime. Um, one of my go-to summer baits is just a topwater frog. This is a, a hollow belly frog. It's got some good meaty hooks just in the color black because black contrasts really well with the blue sky when that fish is looking up at a bait. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna work the rest of these pads. I've got maybe like 100 yards left, maybe 75 yards until I hit the next riffle. And then we're gonna do some more coasting. I'm just pitching to these little pockets in the pad and that's where he ate. That was so cool, man. So we've traveled maybe quarter mile half mile caught one fish I'm trying to figure this place out it's an interesting body of water i will say that all right let's keep rowing yeah really how big you don't want it? I already missed him. We won't hit it anymore. We ain't got anything to really catch him All right, I'll try it. I'll give her. Okay, so right in front of me, I don't know if you guys can see that, but right there is uh, Finn and Steven, and uh, they're the ones doing the whole fly fishing deal. They just point out a fish on a bed, and they just, I guess, like didn't want it or couldn't get it since they're using different tactics. So they pointed me over to this fish that's literally spawning. This fish is spawning right on top of a log. This is really sick. I can just barely see him. This water's clear, but it's pretty chalky. Right, he's about a one pounder. Let's see if we'll eat the bandito bug. Oh, did he just eat that? There we go. Yep, he ate that. <laughs> that was really sick. So, guess that answered the question. These fish are still spawning right now. <laughs> I mean, he may be a late spawner, late bloomer, but at the very least, it's cool to know where these fish are at in the timeline of, uh, of spring. Wow, he really hammered that thing. Nice. That was so cool. Second fish of the day. It's so weird catching spawning fish in rivers like this because they spawn in like really like particular areas. Like that fish is spawning on a log. 
like not even on a gravel bed or a sand bed, like right on top of a log. And you can pretty much guarantee no one has caught this fish before, especially in the, in the devils where like this place gets seldom fished. Wow, good stuff. Back she goes. Ooh, she gave me a little wave goodbye. Just a little tip for you guys. If you're going on a trip like this, um, you can only pack like so much gear. I would say total on my kayak, I've got anywhere from 40 to 50 pounds of stuff and I'm like fully loaded down. Um, you know, I'm really limited to what I can bring. I've got enough food for four days. I got enough, you know, fishing gear, enough camera gear. But uh, one thing that weighs a ton is obviously water. I didn't pack any water this trip. All I did was I packed a few little filtration system, doohickey dangle things or whatever you want to call them. And that's all I'm drinking. But I figured this would be kind of a good moment to... Mm. Mm. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. That was so good. I haven't had a drop of water all day. Um, I figured this would be kind of a nice moment to talk about what I think of the devil so far. I have no idea how long we've floated, but it's been a good bit. Um, it's an interesting river. It definitely exceeds my expectations. There's big rock, there's tons of current, the water's clear, there's grass, there's reeds, there's small, there's largemouth. It's like everything a bass angler could ask for. Um, I'm still figuring this out though. I've only caught two fish, so I'm very much, I'm like on the lower end of the totem pole as far as learning this, uh, this body of water out, but I am getting close. The two baits I've caught fish on, one of which is a bandito bug, and then the other one is just like a, a frog. So slowly but surely, we're, we're finding some fish. It sounds like the, the dudes that are with us are fly fishing have caught some good smallmouth too, but we're just making the rounds. I will say, I think these fish are definitely relating towards grass, uh, any sort of wood. There's not a whole lot of laydowns in this river, so if you can find a laydown, you're, you're in the zone. You're in the money ticket area. This is the best tasting water ever. Like, hands down, man. Mmm. we go yeah that's what's up no she pulled off damn it what do you got to say about that can you blur this out yeah i can blur that perfect. out perfect that's what i have to say about that oh <laughs> that the, was a good blow up. That was a, dude, as soon as it hit the water. Yeah. That was a four pounder all day. How did he come unbuttoned? <laughs> Man, that was a good fish. Yeah, I think I'm cursed. Oh. There he is. There he is. That was too freaking sick, man. That was too sick. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, come here. Wow, that would, dude, I wish you had the perspective that I just had. Holy smokes. That was the sickest freaking eat I've had all year. The perspective that you guys probably had with that whole ordeal, that fish coming up and eating the frog was probably insane. That got my heart racing. It has been a, it has been quite a tough little journey figuring out the Devil's River. It's probably one of the most unique river systems I've ever fished, and I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, but it is difficult. There's just so much to fish. Everything looks good. It's like you want to take a cast at every single tree, every single rock, because it all looks like it could hold a fish. But what Alex and I are slowly figuring out right now is these fish are actually super, super shallow. A lot shallower than I would normally think like fishing a lake. Like these fish are putting themselves in what do you say, inches probably? Like we were, he was spooking some, like filming me that were in inches. He gave me the memo. He's like, dude, I'm seeing some like good fish like in six inches of water. So since he said that I've been on this, this, this pattern, this program of taking the frog, just a little black frog 
and pitching under these canopies, these trees and working it really fast. And it, it just gets them fired up. Like they feel so comfortable and they just, they, you know, it's like an instinct thing. That's probably close to a three pound Devil's River largemouth. My first, my biggest one of the trip so far, I'm thinking we'll probably break this guy, but uh, with it being the first day, we're just kind of getting into the swing of things. <laughs> Such a beautiful fish. They look a lot different here down way south in Texas. These, these fish are just so pretty. Wow. Get a load of that. Whew. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dude, that water is incredible. He's gone. <laughs> this is what makes the Devil's River so badass, is you get to see your fish swim away. Um, and the other cool thing, in my opinion, is you're up and close with this fish. The battle is like very tight corners. It's not like you make this big long cast, hook up with a fish, you're in a giant bass boat. It's like that fish literally pulled my boat. You feel every ounce and energy of the largemouth or smallmouth when you hook up in this river. Yeah, we've yet to catch a small, we've yet to pass through a small, but I think what Alex was saying is, they're more down that away. Cool, figuring out a pattern. That's always a good feeling to like consistently get some bites and slowly start to take a step further to getting some beggins. I'm, I'm thinking we, we, we could get into some fish. There's plenty more of these, uh, these low hanging trees left to fish. Wow, that felt so good, man. Put it there. Boom, Devil's River 2019, let's get them. Oh, there's a waterfall over here. Well, I've got absolutely no idea where I'm at right now. Uh, <laughs> I think Alex is behind me. At least I hope he is. Uh, but I was just fishing a little, a little ditch and all of a sudden I ended up in this. Just kind of like a, a tiny little creek. It's, it's, it's weird. I don't, I don't know if I'm lost or I don't know if it's like another section of the river, but I'm just gonna keep going down. I'm literally like by myself right now. I've got no idea where anyone's at. All right. On the bright side, I think it's gonna get a little bit fishier as we go down. This running water will probably push up a bunch of bait, get those fish feeding, which will look really good for the frog and swim bait action. Wow. This is not fun. This is, this is not fun. Molly, hell yeah. My first Devil's River smallmouth. It's hoping maybe for a little bit bigger one, but I'm not picky, she'll do. This actually might be my first ever smallmouth of the year on a bandito bug. It's pretty huge. See you, dude. No! hammered that. Oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. That was just ridiculous. That was just the dumbest thing I've, I think that's ever happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, I missed the cast. I was trying to get up under the tree and as soon as this thing hit the water. <laughs> I guess this is what this place is all about. There you have it. The frog pattern continues. It's really, really fun to get them on this frog. Could they be eating something else? 
a little bit better probably but it's just a blast to get like you know two three pounders in skinny clear water on a top water frog check him out that was just the dumbest catch i sh i don't even deserve this fish all right you gonna get a release okay. <sighs> that's what i get <laughs> that was an aggressive fish i wish every fish i would cast at would eat it like that so if you don't know by now that was that wasn't supposed to happen i, I was trying to get under the tree i missed but i still got a pity catch so <laughs> looking good <laughs> alex is just shaking his head <laughs> so am i <laughs> that was dope Got him. Oh, yeah. Came back the second time. How sick is that? That was so dope, bro. There we go. Just got another one. Pretty unreal, that's four bites in a row. I don't know if it's a PM deal. I don't know if it's like an afternoon deal, but these fish are super fired up. I've gotten four bites, like just in this freaking area. He hammered it too. My God, does he want it. Hell yeah. There we go. Yes, sir. Oh, that is going to be the conclusion for day number one on the Devil's River. Such an interesting fish. They look way different than any largemouth that I've ever caught. They got real long heads, mean attitudes, and they're full of spunk. Whoosh. How about that? Not a bad start to our big journey. Um, let's just get the kayaks back on some land and talk about the rest of this trip because this is just the beginning. Like we are about to get into some serious, some mega sauce and I'm excited to bring you guys along with it. Oh. Well guys, welcome to uh, my new home. I sold my house in Fort Worth and living on the Devil's River now. <laughs> Coolest part about this trip is when you're done fishing, you take two steps from the water to the land and this is where you sleep. You get to wake up on the river, fall asleep on the river. You're living on the river, it's river life. Um, so these guys are gonna be camping with us, uh, Finn and Steven, and we're just gonna make a nice little spot. The crazy thing, the difficult part about fishing here in Devils is not only do you have to be like really cognizant of not making fires, not littering, but you also have to watch out for areas where you can and cannot go. Pretty much like 99% of this land that surrounds the river is completely private. So it's, um, no go zone. You don't want to be trespassing on land here in Texas because people have big guns. So you have to either look for islands or designated camping zones uh, set up by Texas Parks and Wildlife. We found a nice little island here, which is totally public. This is technically the riverbed. So this is where we're gonna be sleeping tonight. And uh, yeah, just join us as we continue the, the way of the river life. What a good day of fishing though. We cranked some good ones. What do you think? Yeah. Not too shabby for a day one and a, and a fresh start in Southern Texas. Feeling good. Um. So, we can't make campfires out here, which means no hot dogs and s'mores, but we got bag food. We got some Southwest chicken with rice, or sorry, Southwest style chicken with rice today. Ooh, is that thunder? Yeah. A little front moving in, nice. Hell yeah, I hope we sleep with some rain. Anyway, let's focus on one thing at a time, oatmeal. Uh, so you basically don't have to use any sort of heating element. You just put a little bit of water in there, which almost seems like it would be the opposite, but you put water in there and it cooks within the bag, so. This is gonna be interesting. By the way, this isn't a product promotion. I just I just like showing you guys the stupid shit I do on the river. Heating instructions. Oh, there's with, there's instructions inside of the instructions. Okay. Oh, here's my meal. Oh, looks good. Looks real good. I can't wait to chow down on some of this. Okay, so what do I do with this oatmeal? Open heating element place in bag with food pouch. I don't put it in here, right? So I open this up. 
Stop me if I'm doing any of this wrong, because I, I need this food. Okay. Boom. That looks like a hand warmer. Yep. Oh, okay, then what? Tear open heating element, put it in there, then put the bag in there? Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm not even, I just know this. I've done this before. Add three to five ounces of any liquid. Any liquid. So can I pee in this? Is that crazy? <laughs> so I add water and then I let it steam for three to five minutes. Just real life. More or is that enough? Give it a little bit more. All right. That's probably good. All right. So then I close it and I wait. You wait. What the hell? No matches, no firewood, no charcoal required. That's crazy. Omeo, you guys should sponsor us because like... This is sick. I would eat oatmeal just in my house. This is like the easiest way to cook food. So it's gonna get hot. Oh, is this for real? Oh, it's getting hot. All right, this is crazy. Yo, that happened way quicker than I thought. Okay, it's not gonna melt through the kai, okay? No. No? Okay. <laughs> That's pretty sick, man. All right, well, while we're waiting on that meal to cook itself, I'm gonna re-rig up some setups. Honestly, I was feeling really crummy last night. I, I think I got sick for some reason, come down here, some sort of allergy in Southern Texas got me feeling some type of way. And I woke up with a gnarly sore throat. So I really didn't have time to like get dialed. Usually for these big fishing trips, I spend like five hours getting my stuff ready, but I really lacked because I was feeling under the weather. But right now I've got a few hours before sunsets uh, to go over some gear. I'm thinking since today was very much oriented around little Jimmy crack corn over here, caught a ton of fish on top water. I'm gonna try to switch things up. I think what I'm gonna do tomorrow, opposed to top water, is I'm gonna throw some finesse and I'm gonna go back to one of my big baits, big swim baits, one of my favorite big baits, this being a little depth bullshit. I've had this since I was just a whippersnapper, but yeah, that's what we're looking at. So I'm getting the spinning reel dialed in and then the casting's good to go. The frog, MVP for today. Just remember that. Tomorrow's gonna be a whole another scenario though. Completely different video. We're fishing new stuff, new tactics, getting after it on the devils. First, I gotta spool some line up though. Today's afternoon festivities were cut short due to some unexpected rain. It wasn't supposed to rain. Of course it wasn't supposed to rain, but it rains. Um, so I'm in a little tiny, This dude, these tents are tiny. I'm in a little tiny Walmart tent right now. Check it out, what's up? Welcome back to MTV Cribs. Got the kitchen. Um, over here is the foyer. Then I think somewhere around here is the spiral staircase. I can't find it right now. But yeah, it's, uh, I think it's like only, I don't know, it's not even that late. It's like 7 or 8 p.m. and <laughs> the rain just shut everything down. So I think this is it. I'm going to say good night and farewell to you guys. Catch you in the morning. If you can even hear me with all these raindrops. <laughs> but uh, yeah, stick with it. Hopefully episode two is going to be a little bit drier. Hopefully full of some bigger fish. We wreck them. Part of the grind. <laughs>